One of the interesting questions that comes up when you look at strings is to consider what happens if you have a string that consists of characters that are actually digits. And so what I'm talking about here is what if you have a string that consists of 3, 4, 6? What we know is that 3, 4, and 6 are actually characters, which means that the string 3, 4, 6 is a three-character string, even though it looks like the number 346. In fact, it's very different from the integer 346. Those two values are in two different data types. 346 is an int, and string 346 is a string. So the question is, is there any relationship between those? And the answer is, there isn't a direct relationship, but when we look at those strings, we can see that they are very similar. And so what Python does is provide some functions that we can use to be able to transform back and forth between those types. We've already seen a couple of these when we were talking about numeric types. The int function and the float function allow us to create integer representations or floating point representations and now with strings we can use those functions to convert strings into integers or floating point numbers so for example if I say I would like to use the int function to convert the string 300 or 346 into its integer representation we see that the result is actually the int 346. Likewise, I could use the float function on the string 346 and it would turn that into the floating point representation which would be 346.0. Now the function that we haven't seen before is the str function which is str. The str function will actually take a numeric value in this case and turn it back into a string. So if I say let's convert to a string the value integer 346 I'll end up with the string 346. So the single integer 346 becomes a three character string when converted through the stir function. Likewise if I say I would like to stir the floating point number 45.867 then what's going to be returned to me is the string representation of that floating point number but notice something interesting the decimal point now is actually going to be one of the characters in the string and so the length of that string is 6 the decimal point is the third character over there are five digit characters plus one decimal point character. So whereas in the floating point representation the decimal point is simply there for positional importance, when we convert it to a string it simply becomes one of the characters in that string representation. Being able to convert back and forth between strings and numeric value can be very useful to us. There is another conversion function that is oftentimes used and that is what's called the ORD function. The ORD function actually returns what's known as the ordinal position or the ASCII code position for a particular character. And this is based on a code that was used originally when uh, computers were designed so that we could store numeric representations instead of being able to store the characters themselves and although there have been a number of these codes the one that we commonly use is based on what is called the ASCII code and uh, now it's more commonly called the Unicode but for our purposes we just want to look at what this does and so for example if I say what is the ORD of the character capital A the response is 65. It turns out that capital A is at position 65 in what is called the ASCII code sequence. 
And what's nice about the ASCII code sequence is that the ORD of capital B is right next to it, so it's 66. And as you can imagine, capital C is 67 and capital D is 68 and so on. If we look at the ORD of another character, say the percent character, it's 37. The symbols are simply assigned positions in the table. Uh, it also is important to note that the ORD of the little a is not the same as the ORD of the big A. In other words, little a and big A are two different characters. Big A is the 65th character, little a is the 97th character. So case sensitivity here means that big A and little a have to be different, and the way that they're different is that they have two different positions in the ASCII table. Finally, it's important to notice that the digit characters themselves have positions in the table. So for example, the ORD of the character 5 is at position 53 of the table. What's important here is to notice that 5 is not at position 5. And so although I can take the int of the character 5 as a string and get the integer 5, if I take the ORD of the character 5, I will get 53, which is its position in the ASCII table. And there are times when we might want to consider using ORD instead of INT when we're doing character transformations. And so for now, what's important is that we just understand the difference between those two. So INT, FLOAT, STIR, ORD, very, very important functions. And the final function we should talk about is a function called CHAR, CHR, which actually is the opposite of ORD. It allows us to provide a position value and it will return the character or the single character string at that position. So char of the value 65 as an integer is going to be the character capital A. Char of 97 is going to be the value little a and so on. So as you could imagine, we could say, what is the ORD of the char of the value 53? And it's going to return 53 back, because char of 53 is going to be 5, and the ORD of 5 is then back to 53. So those are really sort of opposite functions that can be used sort of as the inverse of one another.